the Central Business Architecture Committee meeting um, to review modifications to one Amber Lane, Northampton map ID 31D-143. Uh, it was published on February 10th and 17th. Uh, 2015. And we'll open this by having the applicant do a presentation. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Usually you come and you present to the board what your proposed what your proposal is. Oh, great. <laughs> do you want me to? Sure, you can get up and speak. Okay. Do you have any drawings or? It's all in the plan, I guess. Okay. That I submitted. Please, please go. Of course. Okay. So I'm Emily Lithenbury and I'm Fitzpatrick Mulvaney. So we bought one Amber Lane in, let's see, October of 2013 and we just moved to Northampton last November and we're getting ready to open an arts cafe together at the property. And we've been kind of working with the city in a variety of capacities, kind of honing in on our build out and the different uh, components of that. So. We are putting before the board today three exterior facade changes as well as a proposal for exterior lights if that's something that we talked about at this meeting. So there are four points in your application itself. And we have uh, examples, I have a narrative that we've written out kind of explaining each of the facade changes and then also documentation of mock-ups of each one of them. So I can go through them one by one and we can all kind of understand a little bit more about what they are and feel free to ask questions as we're going along. Um, the first facade change, which way for the window, the door to the window, that's the east side. Are you yes. You're talking about this? Oh, uh, is that the first one? Yes, it is. Yeah. Wow. That's the first picture. Oh, oh okay. okay. We're going to start with that one. We can start with that one. I think in the narrative I start in a different order, but let's start with that one. So we're starting with um, what looks like a new entrance on, I think it's the south side of the building. The property's right across the street and then the Sonic Street parking lot. And um, that side of the building faces on to the parking lot. So. Um, you include this like plot plan. Uh, could you just give me the north-south sure. orientation? Sure, yeah, I know. It's, it's so north, confusing. South, so yeah. this is what we're calling south. Okay, so the pocket right. park. Right, right. The, south yeah, the, the south side. And, and so here's the Sonic Street parking lot, okay. here's Main Street, yeah. and here's yeah. the Sonic. Yeah, I, I know that. I we were 90 that. degrees off for a very long yeah. time, oh, and then okay. we had to shift kind of, it's it's complicated. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the east side of the building, uh, is not really seen when you uh, come into the parking lot right. or when you travel down Cracker Barrel Alley, which is the alley that. Sort well, of that's Amber Lane. Uh, oh, sorry. The east side of the building is Amber Lane. Correct. Yes. Correct. Yes. So yes. you can't. So you can't see that side as well. So part of our yeah. thinking in talking about this first facade change would be moving our entrance for our business to the south side of the building, which is the side that opens onto the parking lot. So it would be a little bit more obvious to people, uh, pedestrians and people parking in the parking lots, that that was indeed a building that you could go into and, you know, have a commerce uh, interaction. Because um, it's not obvious, because like I said, you, you, you can't see the east side of the building really from... As well. It just doesn't point. present as well. So currently what's there, as it shows in your picture in kind of the small inset on the right, is a 10 foot wide window that is, I'm not exactly sure how tall it is, but it has four lights high and then it's 10 feet wide. Uh, it is supported on the top by a lentil that reaches out probably about six to eight inches on each side of the top of the window. So that's the structural support for that. So in keeping the fact that the structural integrity of the building is supported by that lentil on the top was part of our consideration in choosing the layout that you see in front of you. So we wanted to actually put the new entrance within that current lentil support. So we're not gonna be going out beyond the brick on either side. The brick that we'll, we are suggesting to remove would be below the window itself to put in probably a 48 inch wide rough opening and then frame in a door and have um, an outswinging means of egress for the public. And then to your right of that would extend the rest of the window. 
So we were trying to. So you're talking about a, a four foot wide door? No, a four foot wide rough opening. But the door itself would be 36 to 38. Well, inches. let's take a step back. The, the existing window that's there. Correct. Are you saying that you're maintaining that width for this new opening? Yes. Sorry, it's easier if I just kind of point it out. Yeah. So okay. this, this window that's here. This is 10 feet wide, right? Okay. As right. is. Right. Oh, and it has and you're an maintaining awning on that it. width. We're maintaining that width. Right. So okay. we're the lentil kind of sticks out a bit on each side, and so we're not going beyond the lentil, basically. So we're kind of. You're utilizing the existing window. Utilizing the existing window and then cutting out the bricks that would be down yeah. here to allow. So you're and this is a door. Correct. So, so you're, you're leaving the right two windows as they're existing and they will remain. Yes, yeah, so we're cutting out four lights. So I think, are there 10 lights that go across? Yeah. Right. Well, I think the way she's, no, I mean, you're, you're moving all the brick from the window down. So uh, not on wood. this side. This is going to have this is wood trim. So oh, it's wood over the brick. Correct. Right. Yeah. Okay. So this is wood. Gotcha. The kind of the side will be. So it almost looks like a picture frame, kind of, and it kind of uh, encapsulates the side of the building. So the top would be wood. The sides would be wood um, to kind of round out the edges, and then the bottom would be wood, except for where the door is. That would be brick that we would take out, and window above it that we would take out. We'd like to maintain the window that we have right now, but as we start to take it out, I'm not sure how that's going to go. So we might have to put an, an entirely new window in here, but ideally we'd like to keep what's there. So basically you're retaining the masonry opening. Correct. Just dropping it down to yes, floor level. Yes, to the floor level. Mm -hmm. And adding a door as well as two, in effect, window panels. So it's yes. three panels. No, no, no. Range was no, nope. they're leaving as many panes as they can. They only want to take out enough window panes for the door. And oh, the rest okay. of it will stay existing. Okay. Actually, I think what she's saying, the brick <laughs> remains <laughs> underneath this. Yes. Okay. Is that what you're saying? This wood down here is just over the existing brick. Correct. You're just taking out the yeah. brick with the door. Okay, so you're, right. you're not extending the right. In principle, that's you're probably going to be a new unit. Of window? Also, oh, for yeah, sure. Because I mean, of some like energy standard requirements, you may be on you probably might have yeah, we'd like to keep the same look, I guess, is kind right. of our point of like, you know, the, yeah. the lattice work. And, yeah. Yeah. Why not leave the brick below it? Below what? Below these windows. Why are you putting the wood trim we, on? We, oh, um, well, the brick is remaining, but the wood trim, because the, the top um, portion of the wood would be, you know, somewhat ornate, and it would obviously be um, on top of the brick. So it would already create a natural, um, you know, maybe an inch out. So to carry that uh, plane all the way around, I think would, would look much neater than having this kind of stair-stepped effect with three different stair steps, one being the wood trim, one being the, the door, and then finally the window, the glass, as it kind of. So what's on it? Right now it's hard to tell because there's an awning there. Yeah, I know. What's underneath that? Uh, is so the lintel show? Is it stone? Is no, it steel? no, it's a steel lintel, I think, but I, I guess I don't well, know for sure. Steel, yeah. But um, it, it doesn't show. Uh, okay, they, so they, it's just brick. They've bricked back. So um, the bricks are slightly um, um, sh Car shorter um, okay. because they've had put two in where kind of okay. in, uh, one and a half. Is it decoratively nicer? It, no? is it, is yeah, there it's, it's okay, but it's it's not... It wasn't a perfect brick job, which like is why the, I suggest well, the eye beam that's the lintel they filled in between right. yeah. the channel. With, so it, with brick, yeah. the brick is, is not consistent okay. across. So yeah, that's why the idea to, to decorate it. Um, and we, we really <laughs> pulled this idea from um, uh, kind of a European cafe facade. And with the, uh, in that example, they had used a natural wood to frame in the entire area, and it was all different glass and then their door. So we, having the, the majority of black trim, decided that you know keeping the ornate carved wood but yet in black would still allow us to kind of pull it all together. Okay. How are you addressing accessibility? It looks like you have to step up into the space. Sure, so um, the floor we approximate is about eight to nine inches uh, on that side of the building. Um, so what we would do would be, um, and this kind of extends into a, another change that's happening outside the building. So it, in, in the, the next sheet, or maybe the, the following yeah. sheets, you, you, there's actually a, a plot plan. Uh, the it was written for the, the narrative that the ramp, this is going to get the ramp up to the top. So, the yeah, top it's, top. it's kind of a, a meandering path that um, it doesn't go beyond a 5% grade. So uh, there's no handrails that are necessary. 
um, but it is going to be the accessible, the handicap accessible entrance, accessible basically, entrance. is the short version. Okay. So if you, anytime you put a new entrance on your property, you have to make it handicap accessible. So uh, in order to do that, but to kind of utilize that entire triangle of land, we are doing something like what Fitz said, where it's a less than 5% grade so that it doesn't have to conform to having handrails. And then in this, we're kind of opening up a larger conversation with the city uh, through Wayne Fiden about having a little parklet outside. And that's not our property, that's city property beyond us. So we reached out to the city and had an idea to introduce a public facing park and utilize more of the land than just the footprint of a normal handicap accessible ramp. We wanted something that was more visually pleasing. We wanted something that was kind of a little bit more public facing. And so we've been working on an idea with the city to use um, that all of that land, kind of everything surrounding this ramp as public seating. So not seating that's related to our cafe in particular, but seating that um, anyone could come and be at. And so that was presented to city council, I think last Thursday and at their first vote, they approved it. So which is very exciting. So that'll kind of all be working. All these pieces have to sort of fit together kind of seamlessly in order to kind of make the whole thing work. But that's what we're thinking. So this isn't your property, but they're Correct. allowing you to build yep. a slope walk. What's the red thing that's on here? That's a bench. Um, so that is a bench that uh, we own that uh, will be elevated at the height of our floor inside. The eight to nine okay. inches. Which is eight to nine inches. We're not really sure because the okay. floor kind of slopes. Um, but that's the only, um, I'd say, aspect of the parklet that we're going to be putting a fixture of our own out there. Everything else is, we're gonna be building it in, in as public-minded space. Okay, I just wanted to make sure it wasn't a piece of building that went all the way out. Mm -hmm. oh, no, just so your own information, if it's just, it just gets approved, I believe next to the opening of the door, you need like 12 or 18 inches. 18 inches on the yeah. pole side. So Correct. this walkway will have to be 18 inches wider on the pole side of the door. Wait, so if you were to, sorry, can you you go the width of your walkway <laughs> in front of the door has to yeah. be 18 inches wider than the door oh, to okay. allow accessibility gotcha. on the pull side. All the way down the path or just upon entering? Uh, it has to be uh, five foot by five, five foot. Okay. Box, right. Gotcha. Yeah. So this has to be squared out five by five square. Okay. level with the entryway. And just to clarify, so to accessibility with the chair. because it's it's not, it's less than a 5% grade, so. And it has to actually be left no, actually, at the door. For the 5 by 5 right outside the door, it has to be 2% quarter inch per foot for 5 feet, and then you can go steeper up to 5 feet. Right, the landing. But if, if we're not really creating a no, handicap. I, I think it's, it's, it doesn't anything to do with the incline. Right? No, it has to do with, yeah, with the door and egress. Oh, around the door. It has it's to be 5 by 5. Right. We're trying to help okay. you. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I understand you're trying to help me. Okay. No, sure. for sure. Um, <laughs> I just don't understand what I'm saying. So this yeah, has okay. to be basically five by five uh -huh. level, and then your grade has to start from there. Okay. And actually, none of this is within our jurisdiction. That's right. Okay. Okay. So, but I would advise you to get some advice from a professional. I don't know if you've been working with anybody. No professional. Yeah. Because um, you will have, once you go for a building permit, they will ask for a code review, especially around the exemption. Because what, what we're all spouting out is the code. Mm -hmm. Oh, for sure. We've talked to Lewis and Chuck numerous times on this project so okay. far, and we have our, our building permit currently for, for the inside work. Okay. Um, so, But um, if you do any of that brick structural work on the outside, you will be required to have an architect or an engineer sign. Is it structural? Project. If you're moving the brick openings, yes. But even though it's supported by the lintel above? That's what we call. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right. When we presented it to him, he didn't see the need for an architect necessarily. Right. Uh, and we uh, did ask, obviously, yeah. before we started this whole thing, because. Um, and the city, uh, I should just say, with the park, with the city has the final call on design. So I'm sure that Chuck or or Lewis will be involved in. With okay. talking to Wayne. About yeah, kind of Wayne and Wayne and us. And that, so. okay. the triangle of input on the triangle. Yes. <clears throat> so this rendering doesn't quite show exactly what's happening there because no, the level would be up higher. Yes. And is that fire hydrant is still there? Yeah, it is still there. Yeah. I, I removed it's a part of it because it was it was just kind too difficult to, to show. That's mm -hmm. And we don't have the final design for that uh, yet. 
you want to talk about so about this? that's option um, one okay. but we also do want to make note of the fact that we have some budgetary restrictions that we're dealing with right now in terms of getting loans for all of the build out and um, kind of honing in on our mechanicals inside the property itself as I think you were saying earlier it is a mixed use building so there was a residential component on top we'll be using the entire property for commercial so in order to do that you have to uh, everything that was ABS plastic on the second floor has to be taken out and become cast iron which is proving to be quite a bit more expensive than our original budget so we also have an idea to kind of unfold this part of uh, our build out in stages because uh, I think that this facade change is going to be kind of expensive, uh, especially as we have to deal with putting in the window next to the door. So in um, an email that I sent to Carolyn, did you forward that to the email that I sent? Uh, no, I didn't know it was finalized, so go ahead. You can oh, okay, because I had sent the renderings. Oh, I didn't see those. Okay. So anyway, I sent a rendering. Um, it, ba it actually basically looks like this. So it's just this without a door. So it's the window that's already there with um, the black trim around it in which we'll be putting, I don't know if I talk with you guys about signs and that kind of thing, but we're putting our name uh, in the top here. So um, that would be in this panel. In the top panel, yeah. yeah. So it would basically kind of look like this except without a door. So it would be the current window that's there with wood trim to kind of encapsulate the entire thing, but we wouldn't be putting the entrance in okay. yet. You say you have a couple of lights over there to illuminate the sign? Uh, no. Um, I think that we would primarily look, uh, utilize the lights that are, are still on, on, on there. And um, <coughs> I think that we would choose to use a cream colored paint. Um, as, as to a way offset the to illuminate it, <coughs> uh, because that side of the building actually does receive a bit of light from the, 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 the from the parking, the parking lot. Lights. However, the other side of the building, which obviously we'll, we'll get to, is is fairly dark, which is why we chose to actually put the lights in each of the breaks mm -hmm. there, okay. really just to illuminate Amber Lane for sure. a lot of right. people who walk walk down there. Right. <coughs> so we kind of we would like consideration of both suggestion so the one that's more complicated with the new entrance and then you know the, the window to the right of that as well as the framing which will tie very nicely into the park lot that we're working on at the city that will have the handicap accessibility and all of this will be amazing and then a second sort of stepped back option that would just be the trim around the window so and is this exact trim work that you're proposing with the little uh, rise in the middle and all that uh yeah fairly it's close accurate representation. Mm -hmm. yeah so, um, and if you guys have insight on kind of a perspective about that, I mean, we'd love to hear it because, um, you know, we haven't, we haven't bought that wood term yet, but I mean, that's the, that's sort of the look, our look inside is kind of industrial meets Victorian. So we like the kind of more Victorian sort of scrolled wood, woodworking detail of that. So yeah. that's what and we're going we're, for. We're very much trying to uh, reuse materials rather than buying things new. So finding something like that is really going to be what's available. Um, so I'm not sure what it will exactly look like, but that is kind of the, the aesthetic vision right. for it. So we haven't purchased that part yet. Right. So just the other option is pretty much the same as this, except that this is no longer a door. And it, it looks it's, more like this panel. But it's just the window that's already there. Right. So we wouldn't even be putting in a new window. We would oh, just and none of, the, none of the woodworking. No, we would be doing the woodworking. Yeah. So the window already exists. It's the window that's on there right now. And you would just be putting the trim. And we would just be putting the trim around. Like the one yep. at the bottom, the <laughs> top. Correct. Yeah. Get rid yeah. of the we, we it would like basically be to set up for the next stage. So we'd still like to do everything. And I think you know the first consideration is is still sort of where we're leaning and we're in the midst of applying for loans. And if everything works out, we we'd really like to move forward with that. But we'd also like to know if this second consideration could be thought about simultaneously so that we have options as we move forward and we don't need to reconvene and we can just make the choice based on how much money we have for that part of the project. So would you be changing the existing door then? Or do you keep the door? We would keep the existing door in this version, at okay. least for now. Instead of swapping it to the window. Wait, sorry. So the existing door weren't oh, a different a different thing you mean? So where do you, I yeah. just want to make sure I understand what you're saying. So the so Amber um, Lane has currently two doors on that property already. Right. So we were going to change one of them out to a window 
Right. And that would still happen. But okay. then the other door, which we were going to keep, we would still keep, and it would be our, our main um, needs to be addressed, the one on the left. Okay. Okay. Going through your, I mean, we probably should take your number of points to be clear <laughs> on this, so, but do we want to do that? Why don't we just start from the beginning? So number one, the new east window. Okay, new east window. Sure. Okay, so that's the other, that, the other picture. <laughs> so basically, uh, on the Amber Lane side of our building, which is the east side, there are two doors. There, uh, and we would like to take out one of the doors and put a window back in there, which is what used to be there. So it's the, we want to take out the door on the right, which is the secondary door. It currently has um, an archway of brick uh, from where the window used to be. So we would just be taking out the door, putting back the window, putting back the brick below it. Um, you're saying that that archway exists under that door? Is that what you're saying? Uh, oh, this window. archway. Oh, oh, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. That used to be a door. Yeah. I it thought is you a were door, saying but it used to be a window, so the, the, the lintel's already there. So you're maintaining the arch lint, the soldier course. Correct. Correct. Okay. So we're taking out <laughs> we're taking out this door and then yeah, putting in that window. Okay. But you're not really going to put to that use that. No. No. That's the <laughs> I think that would be if this were New York and we needed to load a bunch of stuff in the street, maybe. <laughs> okay. So this will just be normal brick. Normal brick. Yeah. What was the function of those people upstairs? I think that they had to have a sep a separate entrance. So there was like a little alcove when you first came in to go up to the apartment. So, I mean, functionally and logistically, it didn't make any sense, but right, it didn't work, really. Wise, I think code-wise, they had to put it on, but it didn't really work as a separate entrance. But okay. I'm assuming so that's, that's why that's they put it on. Clear. And the window would be to match the other existing. The window windows. we would actually take from um, our next point, which is um, this wall, lattice black wall over here. There is a window in the middle of that, and we would. Is it the same there. size as the one on the yes. left? Yes, identical. It's a yeah. roof window. It's just um, double hung. Yes, mm -hmm. double hung and insulated. It's it's actually an upgrade from the other windows. Some of them are single panes in our building, but the one in the um, faux lattice wall is so already. Just to, to be sure, mm -hmm. um, this one that you're removing. You know? This, yeah. This one. So this is like a. Okay. Well, let me just okay. ask. The one that you're removing yep. matches this one. It's the exact same size and shape as that. Correct. Okay. Uh, Muttons also. What's wrong with that? Like lamb muttons? The way it's divided. Divider like <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yes. Muttons or muttons? You know, the grill. The, 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 the grills. It has uh, a single uh, horizontal. So it's a one over one window. Yeah, the grays slide it up. Yeah. And Which the is other the ones are also one The same. One. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we would. Uh, most likely be putting back the, um, I'm not sure if it look out. sill? To the, yeah, I guess that the exterior sill of the brick. sticks out a little bit. Yeah. So it's like yeah. Look, yeah. We it's basically just piece. want it to look like the okay. one on the left. Exactly. Okay. Door. Okay. Perfect. How it, how it looked a long time. That's an easy sell. Yeah. That's the easy one. Mm -hmm. And then this? Okay. Now the conference. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> So, so okay, uh, that part of the building used to be a barn way back in the day. This building was built in 1800, and that used to have carriage doors on it, and was how the horses got into the barn and the carriage and all of that. And I don't know kind of the history after that until now what it looks like is a black lattice wood wall with a window, this window that we're talking about moving in the middle of it, and then a planter box hanging on the outside with big flowers and, and all of that. So our, our number one consideration for this facade change is to let natural light into the building. So, so what's that, going on inside? Just uh, so oh. in, in, in throughout? Yeah. Or inside where the garage room. That'll be seating for a cafe. Okay. So the it's interesting. So the way the property works, it's kind of like this, and there's a brick wall running up the middle of the inside of the space because it used to be two buildings, we think. Like it used to be the barn and then the carriage driver lived in the other building. And then they broke down passageways on both sides. So now it's kind of one, you know, seamless thing. There's a big wall here. There's a big wall here. Oh there. Yeah. And so this building was the 
Yeah, yeah. this was the right. house. You can and actually see it, right? So okay. right yeah. left of exactly. the gutter. Correct. Mm -hmm. So the way our business design works is the espresso bar is in this room, and this is where the main commerce is happening. And then in the second room are where our two ADA bathrooms are, and the majority of the seating, and we're designing a whole art gallery space um, for people to kind of show local art and that kind of thing. So what you would see through this would be people sitting and art. Okay. So is your thought that it's going to be an operable door? No, so actually we should kind of release the word door. So um, what you guys have in front of you, this proposal is a little bit outdated to something that I sent Carolyn earlier today, and I'm sorry that it's not before you right now, but basically our main consideration is for the light. And in thinking about it a little bit more, we realized that a garage door was allowing a potential means of egress that we didn't necessarily intend because we will mostly be working in the espresso bar, which is the other room, and then there's this brick wall in the way. And we really don't want people to be walking into that second room or walking out of that second room and not being able to kind of have that visual recognition, okay, this is what's happening uh, in our space. So in looking at that a little bit more closely, we decided that a fixed wall of windows would make more sense than something that could completely swing up and possibly be misconstrued as a means of egress. So, in the proposal that I have in front of you, I do make note that we didn't want it as a means of egress, and that's how we've submitted it to the building inspector. But I think that still, yeah, fixed wall yeah I think that I think that it's more clear to kind of de design yeah. it like that. So you can so, talk about the um, what it looks like. I guess aesthetically, um, we, we we moved here from San Francisco, and this is a very popular way to have a large wall of windows that can be opened. Kind of at will for you know whatever purpose it needs to serve so we're coming from that mindset and we looked at this and and i said this looks like a garage <laughs> because you know that's what it used to be so i was like okay well if we're going to do a wall of windows let's look into a garage door because then we have the option of, of opening it up and really allowing a seamless uh, transition between the inside and outside and letting you know but you're not a doing air. That. Well, okay, so that was what we intended, but we did not intend for it to be a means of egress for people to come and go because of the security issue, because we're not going to have eyes and we're not going to have a closer camera, you know, facility. So, right, so we, explain what it looks like now. Oh, okay. okay. Well, I'm just okay. Saying, <laughs> yes. okay, so so when some of these external concerns were, were brought up about people leaving through there, I mean, it really, uh, kind of instilled in us that we actually didn't want people to go out there because it's, that's not a good idea. So, like she said, main concern is is light. And we have a fantastic cafe window already on the property on the south side. And we basically want to reproduce that in some way on the east side. And the garage door was the most cost-effective way to accomplish this goal from kind of our you know, okay. so so where we're going with this is that the bottom half of it is going to be a fixed set of windows. So that's kind of what we're thinking. And then the top half would be operable windows that could open. So the it's eight, eight feet high and nine feet wide is the rough opening. So we want to develop kind of halfway up, which would be, I guess, 48 inches we would do. Four, yeah. So we, we just kind of have come to terms with this this weekend, kind of right. like redesigning the whole thing. So the, the it would go 48 inches, and this would be windows at the bottom, glass, letting in light, but they would be fixed. They would not open. And then the top half would be four panels of glass, and they would be about two feet wide by four feet high. And there would be four of them evenly spaced across. Now what we're looking into is the feasibility in terms of cost and also functionality and energy efficiency about how exactly to work this. But what I had written to Carolyn earlier today was an idea that we had with the four panes of glass being able to turn 90 degrees so that they'd be perpendicular to the building and then slide to the outside. And the reason we like this and the way that it would work, so there are about, there are two thicknesses of brick currently yeah, before probably about 18 inches from the exterior of the building to the inside framing drywall. So we have a, a right. Quite a bit so wide. each each window is two feet wide. So when it turns 90 degrees, 
eight to nine inches would stick out beyond our building and the other 15 to 16 inches would actually stick into the cafe with the way that it kind of would be situated in the thickness of brick and then they would slide to the sides and what we're designing kind of right beyond that on the inside is a bistro so it would be kind of like a bistro bar maybe 12 inches wide like a slab of wood or a piece of metal and that would go the whole length of the nine feet and then we would have stools in front of that and patrons would be able to sit there and, and have their coffee and kind of look out this window so it would still get across the natural light, which is our main priority. And then it also would allow airflow. So that's great with the kind of, the, that was our second priority. So if the top half of the window is open, they're letting air flow through, but it's not coming across as a means of egress, which is something that we really value. And I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna stop you guys. I appreciate all of the thought that you've put into this, mm -hmm. um, but we can't evaluate things if we don't know what it looks like. Oh, so, I mean, I have it. I can show it to you. I, I know, but it's not its not part of the, the presentation right now. So I appreciate that you have all this information in, in your heads, and it exists somewhere on paper, but it doesn't right. exist here. So I guess what I'd like to do is talk about what we are looking at, and okay. then very likely we're going to ask you to come back and present what your final design but is. But also let us tell you that normally what we do is you show us exactly how wide the windows are, exactly what the trim looks like, mm -hmm. and all of that, and then we actually make comments on, you need more trim, you need less trim, and when you go away, what was approved is what you build, mm. as opposed to there's an idea of my change, blah, blah, blah. Well, I guess it has to be more sp very specific. We didn't really understand yeah. what exactly, I didn't right. even know I was supposed to present something. I yeah, thought no, that so. what we wrote here was the presentation, I guess, so I, I didn't realize but what we actually need what to see is to exactly <laughs> what it will look like. Okay. Yeah. And then we'll be able to yeah. tell you more. I mean, for someone who's never done this process before, like you, I right. mean, I, I, we hear your energy, and I know you're excited mm -hmm. about this project, but we have to, we have very specific guidelines, mm -hmm. and we can't have, like, either or. Okay. You know, you should come to us with a set of drawings of what that opening is going to look like specifically from the exterior. And even on the woodwork, and let me give you an example okay. why. We need to see exactly what it will look like, even if you're going to salvage it, to find your salvage piece, mm -hmm. photograph it, show us. Mm -hmm. Because what will happen is if, if we say, if you just tell us that it's going to be kind of like this, but we're not sure, if we approve that, the next people that come in could do it in a way that nobody likes. And so we, we actually can't be setting precedent by allowing you free reign, basically, mm -hmm. to go find a piece. We actually have to see the piece that you found that you want to use, and then show us. Yeah, I, I could just interject. So I suggested that they could provide an option of with um, probably needs a little more specificity. But because the windows, they're replicating exactly the windows are there. This is a um, anomaly building, and they're creating more glazing. Obviously, you want to see the style so it matches architecturally. Well, what they could do sense. is they could even go to the lumber yard work with whoever they're going to work with at the yard to get a, a catalog cut of the, the window that they're going to replace it with yeah and show right. us that for which one for the one where we're taking the door out and putting the window in or anything that you're replacing mm -hmm. so the one so anything that's going to be new so the one where we're taking the window out of the lattice wall and putting it in the door mm -hmm. that's, that's obvious fine. because it's already there but the one where we're putting, taking out the lattice wall and putting in a wall of windows, you'd like to see the actual drawing window. Right. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And similarly, I think many of us here doubt that you're going to be able to pull up on the south side, pull out enough for the door and leave the rest intact. We all think that that's going to end up as a new unit. For sure. Yeah. And so uh, a, a cut of that unit also. Of that window. Yeah. Which, which dimensions. Okay. On the south side. Okay. Oh, you that you can't just cut out the panel. Right. Right. You're trying to take out one window. Which makes the difference because then you're going to have to replace the whole thing. Anyway. Correct. Right. And okay. that's what we're saying. So what we like right. to see is, um, I mean, if you can do it, power to you. But there's a lot of people here that have done this for a long time. We don't think you can. <laughs> <laughs> so, but for example, I mean, I think, you know, like you said, it depends on what it's going to cost. I mean, I think at this stage, you should determine what, like, that south end opening is going to cost you. The mm -hmm. door and the two windows versus the three windows. Decide on what path you're taking and give us that option. Don't give us an either or because of the money. 
Are you working with a contractor yet? Yes, and I think that you know we're applying for a loan, so that's the tricky thing, right? If we get the loan, things are easier than if we don't get the loan. So that's why the timing of it is a little bit difficult. Well, let us, let us tell you this. We're all very supportive of the project. We want you to succeed. Of course, all right? We want, all we want to do I is, hope so. <laughs> what we need to do is word it, word it in approval in such a way that we agree with the things that you're actually going to put in there physically. Right. Um, and do it in such a way that so that the next people down the road don't have a lot of leeway with us either. You know, otherwise, we just give everything away. Yeah, the next people will apply. Mm -hmm. Well, I think maybe an alternative, though, instead of um, get granting a decision, is potentially find out you know how long is it going to take you to get the specs. I, I right. thought that you had some specs already that you had picked from a catalog for this new design. So that would be the alternative. You know, if you brought the specs to say we're going to do this one. The, in fact, you're probably going to get better energy efficiency without the garage door because right. that right. blows the energy efficiency mm -hmm. out the window anyway. Which is part of our um, consideration as we looked at it in more detail. But what you could do, you know, you could continue the hearing, say, a month, pick a date and a time, so that mm -hmm. there doesn't have to be new advertising, and that right. in that time mm -hmm. they can pin down the spec sheets and the wood trim that is now the alternative for the outside of the window right. if you don't. And by then you may know whether you're going to do it in phases and do a door mm -hmm. or just keep the windows there. Right. I mean, I, you know, our apologies and not really understanding mm -hmm. exactly what we needed to come here with and exactly, I guess, how specific mm -hmm. in detail you would like to see it because, you know, we're kind of in the idea stage, but we felt that we needed to know whether or not these ideas or salient um, in terms of the committee's perspective before we got into the detail or you know before we purchased anything or kind of went out there in that way because that might further implicate things and confuse them down the line and now it's sounding like maybe we should have had that ahead of time so no, really we don't want to purchase yeah right. don't don't purchase. Purchase. what we would like to see <laughs> is like if you have uh, a piece of wood molding that you're finding that you really want to use mm -hmm. photograph it mm -hmm. send it to us and say this is what we'd like to use and put it on hold to say get the guy 10 bucks to hold it or you know whatever right. it's going to be and uh, just say this is what we'd like to use. I want to get it approved first, and then I'll, then I'll buy it. Gotcha. That kind of thing. We've had situations in the past where somebody bought some windows already. We all looked at them and went <laughs> like that, and just uh, you know. But at that point, you know, we're feeling better for people. But we'd rather help you ahead of time. Right. So that's what we would prefer: is to figure it out, um, get the catalog cut. You're going to order, but don't order it yet. Kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So well, often with uh, applicants on a project. They'll come in with this and we'll have what's sort of known as a workshop session. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're doing exactly what we're doing right now. You have ideas, you have options to explore. You're bouncing it off of right. a panel of more or less experienced people here. And hopefully that will begin to gel. But legally, there has to be on file a picture, a drawing of what it is that you're going to do. And so that's what you're aiming towards, and hopefully, I think we're we're aimed in that direction now. Yeah, it sounds Th this is a, a a good good way to work it out because I think you know we've come up with a few ideas. We've been excited about some of your thoughts, and there's a, a, a synergy that can happen. However, all that said, the wall of glass that we place in the garage door, I personally think it would be fine and great. Yeah, you know, I think everybody else here probably feels the same way, even though I don't want to speak well. Um, so we're not against it at all. We're just trying to figure out how to get you to a place where we can actually see something that's going to be in place. Okay. And then go from there. That makes sense. Um, for the south side that faces the parking lot, if our final decision dis, you know, ends up being this kind of staged process where first we start with the trim and then a year from now we do the entrance and that kind of thing, would we convene first now for the first stage and later for the second stage or kind of plan the rollout over time or how, how would that work so we'd rather approve the whole thing and you just tell us how to do it okay right so you can do it by phase you say here's this here's the cut <coughs> okay. here's the door we're going to put in right. we've discovered we can't just carve out a piece of the window and keep the rest yeah. in yeah, yeah we yeah. have to put the this spec door in mm -hmm. and then that's already approved but you might not do it in the first phase you're going to put the wood panel on okay gotcha that makes sense I think it would be worth your while to get a design professional to help you put this together for us. You know, drawings that are specific enough that we can understand this. 
Uh, you know, we also received a letter from one of your uh, brothers, yes. the abuser brothers. Mm -hmm. You know, and they had some concern about that, what they thought was a garage door. Because right. that's how it was written. As right, a garage exactly. Door. So that's another need for specificity so that We've everyone been, knows what's going on. Here, We've been you know? working with the abuses. They uh, brought their concerns to our attention via a phone call last Friday. So, uh, you know, that kind of led us to actually shed a little bit of light on our own concerns about the garage door, which is sort of what Fitz was kind of talking about because we're still sort of mulling it over ourselves. But um, we sent our proposal to them today, what we were going to bring to you and what we also sent to Carolyn um, with the new mock-ups and pictures and descriptions that are not in front of you. But um, anyway, they didn't respond to that, so I'm not really sure if they hadn't seen it yet or something, but, um, or no, we sent it last night. But we got their letter as well. So is Amberlynn private? What do you say? Is Amberlynn private? Uh, yes. And yeah, it's I not think owned by you. It's owned by Amber Lane. Oh, the, 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 what the happens street? is the, the property line changes. You see mm -hmm. right where like the little kink, yeah, the kink middle. in the building That's is where here. The yeah. ends From that kink where back Amber is all owned by abusers. Oh, it is. And okay. the only people that have an easement to it is faces, which they have a garage door for deliveries. Well, how did the previous garage door? Oh, they closed it. The it was different. closed off. So they got rid of their yeah. rights to access. Yeah. Okay. The other yeah, piece yeah. of it is, I'm not sure how much visi visibility that garage door has it from doesn't. the public oh, way. Yeah, right. yeah. So, you know, in terms of jurisdiction, right. I don't know how much jurisdiction you'd have. We'd have to, I mean, this is parking lot, not public street. And so the, the ordinance says, you know, if it's visible from a public way, then it's your jurisdiction. Right. Parking so, lot is public way. What's that? Parking lot is public way. Right, but I don't know that you can see that garage door from the parking lot, is what I'm saying. Because of the bend in the building. Yeah, because yeah, of the bend in the building. The so, and very likely that that opening probably got filled in before there was even a downtown. Okay, <laughs> so, right. I'm sure. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I think, can we, can to, we talk about the last one for a minute? Well, wait, can I say one more thing about the abuses? Sure. So we did definitely want to be sensitive to their concerns. You know, they brought it to us via phone call last week that they were worried about having uh, something that could be construed as a means of egress opening onto their property. Obviously, but that makes a lot of sense. So I felt like we were pretty sensitive to that in coming up with this kind of redesign of the fixed wall of windows. So I definitely think it benefits us a lot, Fitz and I, for our business itself. It makes a lot of sense, and it still gets across the natural light thing. So I hope that mitigates their concerns. Um, but we'll see. Okay. So the last thing was the exterior light. So my, my first question is, it, is it dark sky compliant? I think so. We brought one. Well, um, Look, we have something so, <laughs> right. that we bought right. because we didn't know there was a dark sky policy. Mm -hmm. OK. Everything's great. great. But we'll show it to you if you um, want. So our Carolyn had mentioned these the five foot candles um, uh, on the pavement, or I think it was five foot candles uh, uh, as a normal height. Right. and. Um, Really, it's the light bulbs that would dictate that. So the light bulbs that we had shows, I believe, were um, 20 watt. Uh, we wrote it down in there. I don't know exactly remember. And we, we also took a picture of this. And I guess in your online submission, too, this fixture. Is it, or did yep. you pick a different picture? No, this is the one, mm -hmm. the exact one. We had bought these There's already. There's also a cover, a a, 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 what I, when we had our meeting, it's not just the light, the illumination level, it's the cutoff on the top. Um, no, no, you don't want to squirt the light up. Correct. Correct. Right. Um, I guess there's like the kind of light bulb that you can get that. Uh, right, so yeah. I saw the light bulb spec that you put in there yes. as well, and that is, that would probably work because it's downlit and it's gotcha. not yeah. allowing the okay. light to come around. Right, enough. right, I mean, the, it's, it would literally be a, a you know, it would have to go up and around, but the, the lights that we're choosing are specifically down mm -hmm. to the pavement. Down light bulb light. Uh, okay. And, and yeah, I mean, we've seen, we've seen a lot of examples around town of, sure. of, of lights that uh, are, are, are like the, the ones that face back into the building, and I guess I, I liked kind of the different uh, option mm -hmm. instead of kind of the homogenous sort of lighting. Um, so that's why we chose these because they have a bit more of an industrial uh, aesthetic, and these are uh, industrial vapor-proof, explosion-proof lights, and they have the glass on the inside. It's a little hard to see um, because of the, of the plastic. Is that, is that classic falling out brand? Yeah, it's it is. Sorry. Just so these are going to be black. 
They are, yes. They will be painted black like the rest of the... Uh, that one's okay. not black. What? That one's not black. So you're you're we're just painting. the black, or do you have to paint? We're painting them. Yeah. <laughs> but not so, so we get a yes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, like all goes in. Yeah, and then this little guy sits down. And yeah, the, the only thing I would recommend is that you might have difficulty finding the light bulb with the uh, downward. Well, this is the bulb that they're proposing. Yeah. That's just the eight watt. For the 25 degree beam spread. Uh, I think that we took a, or we have like a thing that was on the yeah, line. Yeah, um, maybe in the next, maybe the next page. page or, yeah. I don't know the order of the pages. It's a Phillips. I think so. Oh, it's a outdoor float. You can actually, what you're going to want to do is get an outdoor float. Because right now it says indoor. Oh. Mm -hmm. And that won't last very long after a storm. Oh, good. You do get an outdoor float. Suggestion. However, you can get them in a flood that's downward facing. So Perfect. Okay. okay. Yeah. So that's okay. a fun. Um, and then obviously we want to do uh, you know illumination along all of the east side of the building um, because you know Amber Lane isn't sure. right. it isn't lit right, isn't lit, right. Mm -hmm. so. and that would be the number of fixtures you're providing correct yes. so we just equally space them between the doors and windows that currently exist just for balance and then put mm -hmm. two on the uh, the south side of the building again you know just for balance mm -hmm. and a little bit more light. Mm -hmm. What I might suggest, um, I'm a little worried that that, that spacing that you're showing that the 8 watt LED might be a little too much light for you, mm -hmm. and you might end up deciding it's too bright. Mm -hmm. So my suggestion would be to try one first, okay. Okay. And see how bright it is, and you might end up choosing. Um, maybe they're all ganged together on, on a dimmer where you can dim it down mm -hmm. to where you like it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think we probably so. do that. Okay. Um, but yeah, and we I think that it, it's mentioned that it's in the warm spectrum. Right. Twenty five hundred. Right. This is good. Yeah. So, so how do we handle this? Should we just <laughs> um, the I would I would suggest looking at dates and I don't know, maybe yeah. give a month for okay. you to get specs for Windows. Sure. Sorry that we'll have to well, come back know, together well, again. Okay. I, I feel bad. Well, you know what your loan by then? You'll know what, so. you, what kind of avenue you're going to take on the yeah. store. I hope so. Um, we're near. We um, we're near the end of it. I think yeah. with them. Like when I spoke to him earlier today, because I knew that this was kind. Of, I wanted to be able to come with that information tonight, and he said hopefully tomorrow. Um, this is through Florence Savings Bank. Hopefully tomorrow they would have. A little bit more information, and then it'll of course take time to close. But once we have at least kind of like the letter agreement, yeah, then, yeah, then we'll more. know more. So, okay. um, so in a month, um, I don't know if everybody knows what their schedule is. I it's going to propose Thursday the twenty sixth. Um, I'm uh, both Tuesday and Wednesday that week. I have other evening events, and Monday as well. So Thursday the 26th that week is really the only day that works for me. Open this up. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my iPad's in the office, so I can't tell you until tomorrow. <laughs> it's March 12th. Well, you want to set that up tentatively, and if you don't know about your loan and all that stuff, you may have to postpone this. So, because okay. if we're continuing, it, yeah, that's good. it's got to be continued to a date certain. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, alternatively, so let's say we. So let's look at the twenty sixth. Um, planning board meets yeah, so at seven. Okay. Um, we could probably meet in the room up there or start at six thirty. Um, I would think that if you had specs, it would go pretty quickly because you understand the project. Right. Um, and if there was a specific you know, catalog number for a window, you could just look at those. So maybe we could plan for 6.30 and then be done. Um, yeah. yeah. I don't think we'll finish by 7. If we start We're out. not likely to have maybe anything else on the agenda. Are we able to send you the information ahead of time? Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. That would stay there. That's maybe. preferable. So yeah. I think that maybe I, how do I send things? Or I don't even know your name. <laughs> you know, it's so awkward. It all so goes far. to our office okay. and we distribute it. Gotcha. Okay. We just need, so for instance, um, I 
thought with you, with your application that you had a, a window spec and you knew exactly which one you were, you were Got buying. it, okay. So the next, so for this next one, make sure you do have the spec. Understood. And yes. then you can send it ahead of time and then they can evaluate it. I don't, I think given the feedback, what you're looking for is you want to know exactly which window and be able to evaluate it against the design. And same with the trim work. Though. And the trim work. Right. Yeah. Uh, ideally, it would be an elevation drawing that you know is a flat, straight-on view drawing. Do you understand what that mm -hmm. means? Yep. Of the window and the door for the south elevation. Same thing for whatever you're doing on the east side. Mm -hmm. So, and then we just have the dimensions. Mm -hmm. um, and ideally, it would be nice where you're putting the other window that is exactly the same. Just show us that it's exactly the same. If you can show us in an elevation. This is what the door looks like. About the door, here's what the window looks like. Okay, so that one is uh, not being approved in this meeting. We it it is it. because it is a change from a window, uh, from a door to a window. Mm -hmm. So we need to look at that and what you're. I mean, you're showing it in Photoshop, mm -hmm. but really, what we want to see is, we you know, Photoshop isn't real. Like when <laughs> you, you can online, manipulate it. If you go online to the window, ma window manufacturers. They have every window configuration known to man. But we're using a window that we already own. Well, you could take a no, picture but, of it, but too. Take a close photograph of it. Okay, so gotcha. That, okay. That one and the one that exists. Yeah, sure. photo the okay. existing okay. window that you're trying to match. Okay. Photo the one you want to move. Yeah. Show us, look, they match. Okay. I mean, it sounds idiotic and simple, but that's the kind of stuff we need to see. Yep. Just mm -hmm. documentation. Yeah, you need to have part of the record. Yeah. Got it. Okay. And for what's new, actual drawings. Okay. And then um, we don't. Do we need to talk about the exterior lighting any further? Well, it's still we're not approving anything, okay. tonight, so technically it's not approved yet. Right. But at the same time, I don't think anybody here has an issue with it. Okay. That way. Yeah. It's, it's, not, the the lamp, it's not the lamp level. It's the fixture that they would be approving, right. not That's the light level. Right. So, okay. Yeah. So and then you approve the building. <laughs> <laughs> the building. Gotcha. Okay, that makes sense. Save yourself some headache. Find it black. Other than that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, well, thank you guys. Yeah. Sure, so, so we're going to see. So, we're gonna, uh, can, could, would someone please make a motion to continue this meeting to Thursday, March 26th at 6 p.m.? So, In this room. In this room. Okay. And, and the yeah. applicant will provide specific details on the east facade and the south facade. We don't even need to do that because we're just continuing. Okay. So who made the motion, sorry? Okay. Who's made this motion? He said I did it. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Thank you. We'll see you in a month. Motion It'll work out. Motion It'll work out. Motion to close the meeting. Yep. Yeah. Do you want to do minutes? Oh, minutes? Did you do this minute? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> like four months worth. You guys haven't met in so you. long. Oh, man. I, think well, you did. I don't think the minutes were here. You did well. meet, but there was no time to do them. <laughs> oh, gosh. Did everybody read the minutes? I actually did. Yeah. Did you? Are <laughs> you okay? Okay. We'll go with your recommendation. Okay. We'll, 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 we'll defer to I, I make a motion that we uh, pass the uh, minutes of the last four meetings that were submitted to us. Second. Second. All in favor? Yay. Okay, same. <laughs> <laughs> you, can just, you, you can accept them. You're not saying that you've read them and you think they're perfect. Okay. You're no, accepting them accepting. as the record. Okay. 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 Sorry. Good luck with your project. It'll be yeah. good. Yeah. It, it'll be great. Yeah, we're really excited. Totally excited. And I think the park is going to be really uh, a very interesting community addition to to the area back there. Yeah. You know, it's in desperate need of some beautification. <laughs> Livelihood. <laughs> Less concrete. Yeah. Tom you, Douglas is a great local architect right here in Northampton. He's going to be out at okay. least getting some of the details. Yeah, that'd be great. Tom Douglas. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. He's in the Yes building. You know where that is? The Apple Street. building? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gotcha. Upstairs. Cool. And before you buy benches and things like that for the outdoors, if you want to run by me, that would be fine. Caroline can get put you in touch with me. Okay. I'll do that for a living. Oh, you make benches? 
No, I designed our own space. You approved benches. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So I, I have a long, uh, I know what will work, what won't, which wood will crack, which wood will mm. crack, all that kind of stuff. That's really great. What are your names, by the way? Um, I'm Rick Klein. Okay. I'm a principal of the Berkshire Design Group for Civil Engineers and Landscape Architects. Gotcha. Okay. Nice to meet you. I'm Elon Tierney. I'm a senior architect and associate at Kuhn Riddle Architects in Amherst. Okay. And I'm Bob Walker. I own uh, Construct Associates for a building firm in town here. Okay, great. Firm. Yeah, and I'm Bruce Kravisky, a retired architect and historic preservation planner. Awesome. Thank you, guys. It was nice to hear your perspectives and as we wade through all of this. So we appreciate it. Good luck. Good luck. Got it. Uh, do we have a motion to adjourn? Did I already do that? Did we vote? Did we? Or did we adjourn? I don't know. Did we adjourn? A motion to adjourn. I'll make a